Hello, and uh, welcome to another FNPS Lunch and Learn. Um, I am here, John just arrived back. He was having some audio issues, so um, I just thought I would get going uh, while he figured that out, but it looks like he's here, although there are some video issues as well, so you'll get to see him looking very interestingly pixelated uh, at some points. <laughs> so before we get started, I would like to encourage everyone to register for our conference. And you guys are seeing our new conference logo done by the talented Kara Driscoll. Um, this conference is a virtual conference to kick off at the end of next month. And then in subsequent weekends, we're having in-person sessions around the state, one in Tallahassee, one in Naples, and one in Sanford or the surrounding areas for both places, for all three places. So. You have to register for the virtual conference in order to be able to, uh, in order to be able to attend the uh, field days, uh, which are throughout the state. Uh, but please go ahead to our website, and as soon as I get off of here, I will uh, put that information into the chat so that everybody can go register. It's a pretty reasonable 55 bucks for the virtual conference, and then. Um, the field days vary, and you can normally pick either Saturday or Sunday, uh, except for a couple of ferns, Sanford one, you have to pay for the whole weekend. So depending on which one you go to, it's a choose your own adventure, or um, you can go to one, two, or all three. And without further ado, I will bring up John. Hey, John, how you doing? Um, hold on, let's get the audio set up it wasn't set up try that again one two testing yes. okay yeah you're okay st you're still crunchy um it does not seem to have improved i'm not sure what's going on so i'm sorry to everyone about that uh audio quality but john has good things to say so just deal with it everybody <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry about that uh we'll work on that going forward so yes uh not a lot of exciting news but we we have just uh, closed our application period for the uh, conservation grants, and we got five grants applications. So we are in the process of reviewing those right now. Uh, the, the there are some several of Archbold Biological Selby Gardens, uh, one from Martin County, uh, uh, Nova Southeastern. So it's a, a diverse group of applicants and we will be begin the review process and we should have it finished in a in a few weeks um we're also encouraging people that even if we we have the the budget to award one five thousand dollar grant and most of the applicants requested uh the the maximum amount of five thousand or close to it uh but we are certainly able maybe to fund other work so we we said if you, even if you're not chosen don't don't despair we may be able to fund some of that work uh going forward going through other means so we're we're excited to have those applications and uh, and look forward to the review process um unfortunately we did not get uh, a uh Dan Austin Award applicant. That is the Ethnobotany Award. It's a little bit diff it difficult to, it's a very specialized field. And, and uh, we may have to revisit the, the terms of the grant to see if we can broaden it uh, a bit and, under the, and still be within those terms or broaden the application period and accept applications um, in, in other parts of the year. Uh, so we, we're, Disappointed that we didn't receive uh, an applicant, but we're going to keep trying there. Uh, on another part of the news, uh, we have been working, the Conservation Committee has been working on a PowerPoint for plant rescue. There are some active plant rescues around the state, and other chapters and individuals are interested in how to go about this. Um, and so we have put together a PowerPoint in, in about planning a rescue, all of the documentation that's needed to, to get through it successfully. 
um, which generally in getting all the all of the permissions in a, in a row, planning for the types of plants that you're going to relocate, where they're going to go, uh, where you may need to have a, a safe a, a place to harden them off in the meantime. You once you uh, get them out of the ground at your donor site. The uh, recipient site may not be ready, or it may not be time to plant th at that particular time. So there, there's a lot of uh, moving pieces to a successful relocation, and we're trying to get all of those steps in one place and and share that information more broadly throughout the state. Uh, we do have a bit of money in the conservation fund to uh, help chapters with such things, uh, materials for flagging, um, if you need other supplies, pots, other other things for the rescue. Sometimes we, we may even contemplate uh, res uh, renting an, an ATV if you need to move uh, move plants from uh, deep in a, uh, from the, the donor site or into a recipient site. And typically the uh, recipient sites are uh, public lands, state parks, um, county parks, or conservation lands of some kind uh, of, of similar habitat. So we, we, we're going through the documentation, all that, and putting the final touches on that to uh, release it to for general consumption. Um, so that's a, those are the two big things that we're working on, uh, right now, um, uh, other conservation, uh, Lily has done a lot of work with DOT and roadside, and that is a, a gap in our, uh, that our, our current group didn't have that expertise. So we're going to definitely try to tap Lily's expertise in working with, uh, DOT for, for that type of, uh, project. Um, one of the issues that we've want, run into recently is uh, it was a, uh, the potential rescue site was a piece of county land that's ultimately going to be uh, a roadway, but it's not, it's not imminent, but it's close, it's soon. And the, the county was asking for a, a lot of permissions and the board of direction uh, directors approved Linda to be able to sign on behalf of FNPS uh, some of the liability and responsibility requests that the uh, county was asking for. So a lot of those permissions can, sometimes they can be simple, sometimes they can get involved. So we we're trying to uh, cover all of those bases and make it as easy as possible for a chapter to tackle this uh, project like this. Um, let's see, what else other, uh, that is all of them that my particular committee has, has uh, been doing uh, recently. We're getting out of the holidays and just tackling the grant cycle. So that's the, uh, the big issue on our plate right now. Awesome. Yeah, so from a staff perspective, right, it is Terea season. Uh, so Lily is out in the field, and that's why you haven't been seeing her on Lunch and Learns, because Fridays are one of her major field days. It's one of the days it's easier for her to find volunteers. So if you recall, you know, six months ago, she was on Lunch and Learns all the time, helping me, answering questions. Um, but she'll be back, just you have to wait until the summer. Um, so she's found a bunch of new trees, and. Uh, We'll have her back on for an update on her work, maybe at the next one. So just a reminder, these are quarterly. So I'm going to do a little presentation on what chapters have sent me for their conservation work. Um, nobody wanted to come on and speak today. Come on, guys. <laughs> it's St. Patrick's Day. Uh, is it St. Patrick's Day today? It is. Oh, geez. Okay. Well, uh, I have some water here. <laughs> <laughs> And we're all green anyway, so. We're all green. We're so green. Um, yeah, okay, so Lily is in Panhandle working on that. And then, of course, we have basically two other major conservation projects statewide. We have the project that I work on, Dysarandra, in Central Florida, 
And so we have the Dice Ranch of Cornetissima, uh, which is in the Greenway, the Ocala National Forest, the, sorry, Marjorie Harris Carr Cross Florida Greenway is the large population there. And so we're working with UF uh, researchers, UF-based researchers on that. <clears throat> that was one of our conservation grants. That was our conservation grant for last year was Dice Ranch of Cornetissima, that researcher doing research. Uh, in addition to our ongoing received grant. So right, we gave a grant and then we received a grant to do the annual demography and restoration work. So it's the season for me to start organizing those activities again. So if you're in Marion County or you're in Polk County and want to help, uh, these days can be a little arduous. I'm sorry, uh, bring a lot of water, but I do bring snacks usually and you get a t-shirt. So keep an eye out for those activities. And then Dice Ranch of Modesta is the one here in Polk County. I'm not in Polk County, but it's only like an hour. Mm -hmm. hour and a half drive for me. And that's the only population remaining in the world of this uh, blushing scrub balm. So you get to see something that not a lot of people get to see and more importantly, smell something that not a lot of people get to smell. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a plug for the conference. Uh, on We had our last year's conservation grant winner was is doing work on Dysarandra. And she's found some very interesting things about uh, Dysarandra pollinators. So she, she was doing an enumeration on some of the, the Dysarandra on the Marjorie Harris Carr property and then setting out camera traps. And she's found some interesting things and I do not want to steal her thunder. So you're just not going to have to attend the conference and see it. Let's go through the chapters and that may prompt some other discussion. remember to turn my mic back on. Sorry guys. Okay, so <laughs> here is a, a map of the areas that did report to me this month. Um, and then we're going to start off with the ICSIA chapter in Northeast Florida. They recently gave the University of North Florida a $500 grant to plant natives at the Sawmill Slough Preserve. Uh, Sawmill Slough Preserve is a 300 acre preserve on the University of North Florida campus named after a large cypress, cypress slough. Um, they're planting a native-only, multi-season, pollinator-friendly garden bed adjacent to the trailhead parking area. This area is part of the UNF Botanical Garden and provide an opportunity to, to, in the future, support native butterflies, bees, wasps, and birds. And to further reinforce the importance of native flora and fauna within uh, the built environment of Northeast Florida, they're also adding plant identification labels, interpretive signage, and we'll be providing guided and self-guided garden tours. Uh, the project design and installation will be led by staff, the UNF Environmental Center staff, with the assistance of students and community volunteers. And ICSIA chapter has been leading field trips to this, uh, this preserve for several years. Uh, here's uh, past president Adam Arendell, looking at what I think are galls on an oak, uh, but I couldn't get information on this particular photo. So. If you're interested in participating, they are jointly running these work days. So um, this is March 25th, not this coming up Saturday, but the Saturday after at 9 a.m. Um, they're removing invasive plants and um, specifically in a pitcher plant habitat. So if you are really interested in pitcher plants and want to help and you're in the Northeast Florida area, um, bring gloves, shoes, other refreshments. You don't need to RSVP if you want to attend. But if you need more information, um, you can contact James Taylor, who received the grant, wrote the grant application, at j.taylor at unf.edu. Okay, and then moving farther south, uh, Sea Rocket Chapter, uh, which covers North Brevard County, has voted to allocate up to $600 
to the Save the Bromeliads project. You may recall one of my earliest lunch and learns was on the Save the Bromeliads conservation project, which um, basically tries to prevent Tillandsia utriculata, a giant air plant, from going extinct. So uh, here is the beautiful uh, Tillandsia utriculata. And so what they did is the $600 is going to be used to reconstruct, to build a new um, cage. So in order to protect the bromeliads from the evil weevil, so the largest threat to the Tillandsia utriculata and other large fleshly air, fleshy air plants in Florida is this weevil. And so what they're literally doing is physically excluding the weevil from being able to get into, you know, the weevil cannot access the plants if you put a fine enough mesh. So that's what these cages are for. Um, so they haven't done, they're planning the construction of this cage, but they haven't started it. So thank you, Sea Rocket Chapter, for doing that. So far, the theme is grant programs. Okay, so moving over to the west coast of Florida, our Hernando chapter um, has been very busy. So our policy and legislation chair, Gene Kelly, is in the Hernando chapter. And so he has been very busy working with chapter president Janet Grabowski on um, basically three major issues. So Hernando County has proposed to develop non-passive user-based recreational facilities at Wikiwachi Preserve. You know, Wikiwachi mermaids, yeah. So um, Hernando Chapter is opposing that um, because it would reduce the quality of the nature-based recreation at Wikiwachi Preserve and harm native plants. Secondly, the Hernando Chapter uh, is supporting the establishment of a springs protection zone on the Wikiwachi River. And um, I will have an action for this at the very end. And then also, the Hernando chapter is supporting a stronger fertilizer ordinance within Hernando County. So if you're in your chapter and you're interested in getting more involved, this is one way that you can do a little bit of writing, uh, look up what issues are important to native plants in your area, and directly make an impact on local government decision making. If you need guidance, you can contact Eugene or I. Um, you're very welcome to um, run things by us to make sure that they're consistent with the mission and other policy statements of the Florida Native Plant Society. So if you are in and around Hernando County, even if you're, you, know, you can help by going to the March 28th meeting held by the FWC on Wikiwachi Spring Projection Zone establishment. And if you need more information, because I don't have the time or anything of that meeting, please contact Jean at jamkelly at tampabay.r.com. Okay, almost done. <laughs> so moving a little bit farther south, our Suncoast chapter covers Hillsborough County, it's a pretty urban county. Their current conservation activities focus on gardening and um, they are specifically focusing, focused on gardening for sustainability and pollinators. So chapter leadership has started visiting homes of new members to assist them with learning to use native plants in their landscapes. This can be a really effective chapter program. Several chapters have this program of visiting new members' homes and then recommending plants for them to plant, remove, et cetera, et cetera, identifying plants for them. It's a great way to use your inherent expertise uh, if you have uh, enough volunteers to be able to sustain such a program. Our Pinellas chapter, just to the west, um, has an active conservation committee that has just started a Pinellas Pollinator Pathways project whether it be promoting planting natives in one's yard as an individual or as groups with larger projects. They're working on developing a series of easy garden templates to share with people who will be working in conjunction with local native plant nurseries to promote these. Eventually, they're gonna make videos showing how to plant the gardens, prune, water, et cetera, like 101 style videos. Uh, and then the members of the conservation committee also are aiming to act as points of contact and resources for local groups who do garden projects already. Um, they're gonna offer resources and answer questions. Uh, they have one committee member who's volunteered to act as a consultant to people who need more help. And, present, and their second project is President Andrea Anderson is doing presentations. So her next presentation is at the Florida Recreation and Park Association Conference, which is in Orlando in August. And she'll be presenting on parks as pollinator pathways to highlight the need to use these pollinator pathways strategies in park management.
Okay, back to us. And let's see if you guys have any questions. Oh, Kimberly Gibbs found out that I didn't have my audio early on. Thank you for letting me know. Um, okay, what do you think, John? You're on mute. There you go. There we go. Um, <clears throat> so such good good work going around the state. Um, it our local chapter of Beauty Berry and Passion Flower. It just we we've been working to on the, with the idea of plant relocations. There was a site in near Orlando, near Claremont, called Castle Hill, which was a beautiful site and unfortunately targeted, uh, could not be bought. So we, there were a lot of plant. There was a lot of plant material that came out of there, and it was re relocated to um, some conservation properties. And one of the properties is on the north shore of Lake Apopka. It's called Little Italy, and it's owned by the St. John's Water Management District. And uh, we were so we we took recently took a tour out there to look at the success of some of those relocations and to see um, lots of lutens, um, uh, polygo, uh, yeah, yeah, polygola lutonia. Um, yeah, there we go. <clears throat> Get the name out and uh, in bloom and and some just so much of the material was established and doing well. So that that was very heartening to to that uh, effort. Uh, other material has gone to Lake Louise State Park, and other material to uh, uh, Lake County Water Authority and um, Scrub Point, which is fairly near Castle Hill. Uh, the so the, some of these relocations can have a, a much broader impact, and and the it's not. It's hard to say. Is it conservation? It's it is conserving plant genetics, um, and and so it's it is important to work with the land manager to get the right type of of property for these relocations. But uh, that's building the alliances that we need to to have a, a much larger in, uh, impact on uh, in in the in these areas. Um, the other thing that's going on in Lake County is we are square in the I, in the in the development core, and Lake County is engaged in looking at conservation lands and 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 establishing better corridors through Lake County and doing. We need to reauthorize our land purchasing and management. Um, and there are certainly some good models out there from uh, Volusia County, Al Alachua County on on redoing ordinances to include not only the purchase of of properties, but the management as well, which is so key to keeping the health of these larger landscapes uh, intact. Um, and I think that's all I, I had on, on those thoughts. Awesome. Yeah, we have uh, Kimberly Gibbs, who's uh, the chapter rep, the new chapter rep for Sea Rocket. So obviously, I reported on their conservation activities, but um, she would like to know how to be more effective in that particular role uh, concerning conservation advocacy. So that's not something that I've done a lot of. Is sort of like, you know, specific training. But one of the things after, because the conference is a lot of work for me. So <laughs> after the conference gets over. Um, one thing I, I have been planning on starting and hope to implement after the conference, so that would be uh, probably June, around the time of the next conservation update, woo, quarter two, okay, mm -hmm. uh, would be a new member welcome meeting, an organizational meeting where we can have breakouts for people who want to be trained in, better trained in advocacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the addition big, to just general networking, which, you know, we mm -hmm. haven't gotten to do very much because of COVID. And, you right. know, we still don't do statewide. We never did statewide particularly well because we only had the annual conference. So if you couldn't make it to the annual conference, you weren't networking with the conservation chair from the Panhandle if you were, you know, from South Florida. So. Mm -hmm. And that's the key is building these alliances with, um, 
low water management districts with with your county parks if they have conservation lands with uh um some of the small uh, like Alachua Conservation or Putnam Land Trust, there are a lot of small holdings, but are that one can build alliances with and uh, really make a difference and build build the to force together. You got that awesome video thing going on there, John. It like you turn into like a cartoon character. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I, and maybe it's time for a new computer with better, more horsepower. <laughs> I'm wondering if your audio is maybe like a shielding issue because it happened with both of your, both of your plugs. It could be. I, it's an it's an old computer and it's past its prime. Dang. Well, um, I we I guess we don't need to belabor any additional. If there's no questions in the chat, we can just wrap this one up early and encourage people, you know, I'll be sending out a, another email for, you know, I'll give you guys a little more time to respond this time, but to all chapter leaders uh, about the conservation update. So if I didn't include you, uh, please don't feel left out. If you're working on a project, uh, you can email me and we can get you, you can either present in person like this on Friday, you can record a video or you can, um, you could just be on in person or yeah, be in person, record a video or send it to me and I'll present it for you. And if you have conservation needs, funding needs that beyond what your chapter can uh, ask us, maybe we can find some extra money to, to fund a, an effort or project. If you need help or expertise, please reach out to us and we'll see if we can find what you need and help you along. Awesome. It's a great offer. Okay. And does everybody uh, know how to get in contact with John? So conservation at fnps.org. Put that in the chat. John Benton. And then me. I'll put myself in the chat. Okay. Yes, please. Yes. Okay. So both of those are in the chat. And now, you know, keep in mind my email inbox is crazy. So if you don't hear back from me, send me another email. <laughs> and we'll see you at the conference. We'll have yes. a breakout session at the conference. Yes. Yeah. Make sure you attend the conference because we'll be doing a lot of networking there. All right. Well, I hope everyone has an excellent weekend. Thank you, John, for taking time out of your very important kayaking. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it, yes, today, uh, not so much, but uh, yeah, well, it's beautiful out there. This is the pretty time of year to get outside. So get outside. Enjoy. Yes. Go enjoy the conservation that you are making happen in the state of Florida. And thank you to uh, Jean is on. So yeah, thank you, Jean, for all of your hard work in conservation. Um, and for everybody else who's, you know, doing general chapter maintenance, admin stuff, you know, welcoming people to meetings, getting the snacks, you know, you guys are the meat of the organization and we couldn't be doing conservation work if we didn't have people invested in conservation and native plants. So thank you everyone. All right. Have a good weekend.